if you follow along on my Instagram at all, you may have seen pictures of what's in this box. And judging by the name on the side, you probably already know what's in this box. I just did a little road trip to Lethbridge, Alberta. And before that, uh, last week, this came in. This plus this plus this can only mean one thing. That is right, I am building a disc grinder. Now, I was looking around at buying diff disc grinders. I was looking at all the different options you've got. Well, we're not gonna go into all the options, but they're so expensive. And there's some things that are worth paying for, don't get me wrong. When I started pricing out putting a grinder together, I was in the neighborhood of over $2,000 for a disc grinder. Essentially, it's a motor, a disc, and optimally, a VFD. Now, I sourced all these things locally, and I'm at $940 Canadian, which is this much American. So I figured the best thing to do is for me to build my own. Now, that doesn't include any of the stands, the adjustable tables, which is something that I'm going to build because while disc grinders are great for like flattening out bevels, getting your, your knife super flat, the biggest reason I probably want this is for working on scales. You know, when you're doing multi-segmented scales, before I do it on my grinder, you know, if you want like different angles and bring them together, glue them all up, it's much more accurate on a disc grinder. You know, anytime you have a belt, it's gonna kind of to a very minor degree, I don't even know if it's really noticeable, maybe it's just craziness in my head, but ultimately when you're pressing on it, it's gonna kind of pucker up a little bit right before that, the, the leading edge. And I think that is less likely to happen when you've got uh, adhesive or your abrasives glued onto the disc. And I just think that the way to, to true materials up, whether it's scale materials, even if you're cutting blocks in half, making your own halves of knife scales, uh, I think the best way to go about that is with a disc grinder. Uh, Jimmy has knives on Instagram. He uh, got a disc grinder and he was showing me uh, how incredibly, showing all of us on his Instagram, how incredibly efficient it is to flatten out scales with a disc grinder. And of course, I, I have to mention Jeff Fader with Fader Knives. He uses his to flatten out his bevels to get ready for hand sanding. And it just, it just makes sense that I've wanted one of these ever since I went down to Lethbridge, which was in January of this year, and I bought the VFD for my big grinder. I was thinking at that time I should do a disc grinder, but I thought, you know what? You know, you kind of gotta control how much money we spend on our our knife making, our business and stuff. But I figured now's the time I'm going to upgrade, especially since I can get one of these. This is actually, uh, I believe this is the KMG disc, and I got it at KnifeMaker.ca, Canadian Knife Making Supplies, fantastic people. And then a little plug for the company that I bought this off of. Uh, it's a company, I think they have offices in Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, so if you're in Southern Alberta, you definitely wanna look these guys up. It's called Southern Rewind. Their service is top notch. Actually, when I was in the store there, he, he asked me, he said, uh, was Brett, I was dealing with Brett and Ed there, and he said, uh, hey, do you got a minute? I was like, yeah, why? He's like, well, if you wanna hook up this extra switch, because it didn't have the reversing switch on this one. This is the KVAC 24 VFD. I have the 27 on my other one, but since this is just a one horse motor, the KVAC 24 is good. And uh, he actually went and hooked up the, the reversing switch for me. So I, I said, yeah, let's get the reversing switch on there. This doesn't come with it, but uh, so if you want, I'll show you how to hook it up so that when you go to do your KVAC 27, because I actually want to put a reversing switch on my 2x72, but he actually just wired it up for me. And then I said, yeah, give me another switch for my, my KVAC 27 for my belt grinder. And even put together a little care package with the leads that I'm gonna need. Absolutely fantastic service. So, so Brett and Ed, thank you so much. You know, I live right outside of Calgary and there's a lot of industry in Calgary, but a lot of these stores deal with big clients, you know, big oil and gas clients. And if it's just, you know, a little guy in his garage saying, hey, I need a VFD and a motor, a lot of times they just don't want to deal with you. And uh, that's not the case with Southern Rewind. They're absolutely top-notch service, and uh, it's totally worth the drive down to Lethbridge uh, to pick this stuff up. Super happy with those guys. I get nothing for plugging them, but I just, you know, when you deal with businesses that offer great service, even just a little one-man show, always gotta support those guys. All right, so the basic concepts of what we're doing here, this grinder is a super simple thing to do by yourself. Uh, it's gonna get a little bit more complicated when I make the table for it because I want to have it adjustable and I've got some ideas and some, some designs I'm playing with, but a disc grinder can really be this simple. All right, bought the good stuff. So this is a Baldor TEFC, which stands for Totally Enclosed Fan Cooled. It's what you're gonna want when you're looking for a motor for your disc, for your disc grinder or a belt grinder, uh, because dust can't get into the motor itself. All right, now here is how complicated a disc grinder is. And this is the part that makes me wonder why on earth 
I guess their tables, different tables are a lot nicer, but essentially I ordered a 5 8 shaft, 5 8 bore for this. And this just mounts right directly onto the motor. You get it nice and flush. I'll use a straight edge and actually get that perfectly flush. But that's basically it. Um, hook this up to the VFD, boom, I've got a disc grinder. Now this is a nine inch disc and you can get 12 inch disc grinders. The reason I wanted a nine is because, you know, most of these sheets come in, is it nine by 12? What you'll do is you actually make a special uh, adhesive for this and I don't have it. I'm gonna order some. It's like, a, I think they call it a disc feathering adhesive or something, 3M makes it. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna use some Super 77. Basically just kind of, I'm gonna put it onto my, my adhesive, spray it on the back there, and then just carefully put it onto here. And then once you get it all pressed out nice and flat, then you just trim the edges, voila. And that's basically how simple a disc grinder can be. I need to make sure I have the proper strain relief plugs. And then I'm actually going to, I got separate switches, so I'm gonna actually uh, wire in a proper on-off switch here. And then also to my belt grinder, I don't have that on-off switch and I got an extra one of those. And then also a reversing switch to my belt grinder. I'm not so sure how it's gonna track. I think there might be some issues, but there's been a few times when I've really wanted a reverse switch, uh, primarily for the setup that I'm thinking that it's a, a jig that I wanna build for sharpening my knives. And the way that I wanna build it, I really wanna have it running backwards. So I wanna reverse my, my belt grinder. So I'm gonna put that in, maybe not right now, but it's really easy to do. But uh, let's go ahead and we'll start wiring this thing up. I'll take you along. I'm not sure how much I'll be able to get done today because I've got a lot of other stuff to do. But at the end of this video, you should know how to wire up your own disc grinder. And again, 940 bucks gets you this setup here. This is totally usable. If It depends what you're using. If you're using it like for flattening the bevels of your knives, especially the kitchen knives, this is all you need right you bolt this down somewhere boom you're good to go super excited about this so if we open this up the first thing i want to do is put my on off switch right in here and uh one thing i like about these kbex like the 24 27 is that they're they're sealed right they've got this nice rubber gasket all in here it really protects it from the dust but um i picked up one of these toggle switches and i'm gonna go ahead and mount this pull out this little nubbin now I want the switch to be flicked up, to turn it on. Makes sense, let me just double check our continuity here. This should be on. I'm totally wrong. Okay, so this goes down like that. So that is on. Correcto mondo. Okay, so it's gonna go like this. This particular switch, it's got this little keyway right here, and then your little on-off legend has a little tab that only fits in one way. <laughs> Love it when they do stuff like that for poor guys like me trying to figure things out on their own. Beauty. Okay, so I'm gonna wanna bring in, I'm gonna bring one line of my power in to here, and then the other one I'm gonna run to here, and then run this back to here. Wow, that was a terrible cut. Look at look at that. My goodness, what's wrong? It's windy outside. It's windy, that's why. If you want to get some decent uh, strain reliefs, you know, just so it's well protected. These ones are sealed in units as well. It's good. We are going to bring the white one right to here. I should have hooked up my ground first. It's always a good rule to hook up your grounds first. Okay, now we'll run this guy over to here. You know what? <laughs> I need to wire this up first. Now I can put this back. Put our legend on here. Painting ring again. There we go. Okay, so there's our on-off switch. The next step of the process, we're gonna hook up our three lines of power going out. For that, we've got another strain relief. I probably should have done this all at one time, put all this, all the strain reliefs in. Now we've got this cord that goes out to our uh, motor, and this actually isn't my permanent one. This is just for right now. I need to get a better quality cord. This one's meant to be in a conduit, I do believe, but it's got three wires, so. I'm gonna make it work for now. This 
So this ground, we're just gonna put right over to here. Okay. Now if you ever wanna reverse the direction of a three-phase motor, all you have to do is switch any two of these legs of power and it will change the direction. It does not matter which ones you switch. I think they have a jumper in here so I can actually switch it that way as well. It's kind of handy, but if you're ever, I know we used to do a lot of conveyors that were three phase motors. When you fire it up and it's running backwards, all you have to do, take any two of these three phase wires and just switch them. Ba boom. Reversed. Well, I almost smacked the camera with that one. And that's pretty much it for a VFD. The one thing I will note is that this comes wired from the factory for a 230 input. And uh, to change that, all I have to do is take this jumper. It was actually on this little terminal right there. So you see it says 230 there, 115. I basically took the jumper from here and put it onto there. You just need to double check that when you go to set yours up. All right, now we're gonna jump onto the motor. I'm gonna get this sucker hooked up. Oh. I forgot, I need morettes. All right, we've got our wire nuts. You tell an American, oh, I need some morettes. You usually don't know what they're talking about. I think that's a Canadian brand. A couple things we need to do. If you look here, well, you can't really see it, but there's a wiring diagram for low voltage or high voltage. So we're gonna be working with the low voltage, so we're gonna to need to take six, five, and four, wire those all together, and they'll put nine to the three, eight to the two, and seven to the one. If you're to do high voltage, you just wire them up like this. So three, six, three, nine, six, two, eight, five, blah, 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 blah. So that's how we got to wire this thing up. What do we say? The six, the five, and the four. Here's a six. Here's a four. What is the five? Come on, five. One, there's a two. What is this? Five. Okay, so let's get these ones out of here. Double check. Six, five, four, five. Six, four. Okay, so we're gonna bring these together. Twist those all together. Slap one of these suckers on. Okay, so we've got that taken care of. I'm gonna get these all so we make some sense of this. Okay, so. Guess we need our strain relief, don't we? I think I made this a little long. I'll be all right. Hook up our ground wire. Okay, good, there we go. Now, how much do we have about that much? I'm gonna strip all these. Now let's go to this again. So, so three and nine. Here's three. What's this purple? Oh yeah, that's a six. I was like, oh, purple six? Well good, purple's uh, six is supposed to be tied there, so we're all right. Here's a nine. I don't want this to be such a schmozzle. Sometimes you don't have a choice though. So three and nine go to one of the legs of power. We'll take this, this, and this. It doesn't matter which color we're using. Now three phase, it doesn't really matter. They're all legs, they're all three equal legs of power. Okay, now we need number two and number eight. So here's two, that one's easy to see. Is red eight? It is. We'll fancy that. Pa-ching, pa-ching, pa -chow. Just like that. One, two, twist a -roo. Slap a wire nut on there. And then seven and one, which would be the only last two. So this is number one. That's number seven. Love it when a plan comes together. There we go. So, so just double check. Three, nine, one leg of power. Two, eight, another leg of power. Seven and one, another leg of power. Six, five, four together. So four, six, and five. There we go. We double checked it. We've got our ground hooked up. Ready to rock and roll. Now, we 
I've got a disc grinder ready to be turned on. <laughs> we hope. Okay, you guys ready? Here goes the on. Oh, status, yes. So forward. You guys ready? I'm gonna flick this to start. Turn up the VFD. Oh, we gotta. Oh, I gotta pick a direction. <laughs> okay. Ready? Look at that. So there's a couple things we can adjust in here. Uh, if we come to the top, do you know what, let me kill this. We still have live power coming in here, so we definitely wanna be cognizant of that. But you see all these trim pots here. This is where we can adjust different things. Um, for instance, this here is max. That's our maximum speed. We can turn that up and down. Minimum speed, we can adjust that. Um, so that the slowest it'll go while still being driven. And then our Excel right here, so how quickly it comes up to speed. Our D cell, how, uh, how quickly it slows down. And then, I'm not sure what boosts or CL are, but all these can be adjusted and you can kind of set them up accordingly so you can kind of configure it how you'd like to. And then there's also one in here, I do believe, that's called the doubler. So if I go, and I, I believe it's this this one right here, this jumper, if I move it over, I can actually go two times the speed on this here grinder. But I don't really want to do that. I think it's gonna be going plenty fast enough. Actually, you know what? I want to see how fast it's going. All right, so we've got this little tachometer here. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see what we have for RPMs. Ugh. 17, 75, 18, 26. So there's our, uh, there's our speed, 18, 26. I guess I could use the photo tack part. Put a little stripe on there, it might be a little more enjoyable. But 1800 RPM, that's plenty good. And honestly, I don't see myself cranking this thing up. Like, so this here is what we got. It's like 320, 320 RPM. You know, even getting up to this, that's that's pretty quick when you're sanding stuff. You don't wanna you don't wanna be going too crazy with it, but I'm pretty happy. I think that's gonna be fantastic. The one thing I am gonna do is I guess that's a little hard. I was wondering how hard it jerks if you just switch it, change directions. Probably not advisable. But um I'm going to actually hook this up because right now on my on my controller this is considered reverse and I want this to be forward right I, in my mind it just makes sense if it's going clockwise that would be the forward direction all right so we could just switch any three leads around but you know what we've got uh, these wires here that are to our switch so we're just gonna switch these around oh crap smack look at this look at this this one came undone All right, I've got this one to forward. And we've got our motor running the right way. I just had an idea how I can hypnotize you. Ooh, <laughs> that was not very good. All right, there's actually one last thing we're going to do. And that, I ordered these extra rubber enclosures for this switch. And it doesn't fit with this ring on here, so we just lost the ring. I think we'll still keep our little legend. It's kind of handy. And then we're going to put a rubber, a little switch on here, just, just to kind of help keep everything clean, keep any dust out of there. Slap that on like that. There we go. 
and straighten out this ledge and that bugs me. There we go. Now let me close this all up. And there we go. All right, so we've got this thing wired and the next phase of this little project, I'm not gonna get to it right now, because obviously in that state, you can use it a little bit, but I really wanna have an adjustable work rest for it. So it was in January that I put this all together and I built this little wooden stand for my two by 72, knowing that uh, it wasn't going to be permanent. I mean, I've been using it for a year. It's it's not too bad. It, it would still work just fine. But my plan has always been to to build a proper metal uh, bench here for this grinder, and then also we'll get that one mounted as well. And then I want to make a really nice adjustable work rest for it, so that when I'm doing scales, you know, if you're doing like multi-segmented scales, and you want the certain angles. Um, it's so nice to be able to do that on a disc grinder. I think it's gonna be much more precise, a lot, just far better fit and finish with a disc grinder as opposed to the belt grinder. And so I gotta incorporate that. I need to design a way that I can have an adjustable rest that I can take off there. So if I do wanna use it for flattening out bevels, I can do that. But I think the primary use for me, at least, at least what I'm planning in my head, and you know, once you have a tool and you use it, sometimes you end up using it completely differently than you had thought. Uh, but right now, I really wanted that for scale work. To be able to just get really hard, 90 degrees, 45 degrees, very precise. I think it's gonna make uh, doing a lot of these uh, scales a lot easier. So that's gonna be going here. And uh, hopefully over the Christmas holidays, we'll be able to get to that. And then I've gotta maybe scoot this out of the way. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we'll get that VFD kind of brought a little closer up front. That was always kind of the plan. This was always just temporary. And then I just had it opened up there just to see my wiring because I'm going to add my power switch right to here. And then I'm also going to add a reverse on here because I've got, uh, well, when I do that sharpening, I want to make a little sharpener. And I think... I think I'm gonna to wanna to run it backwards when I'm sharpening knives. So anyways, guys, hopefully that kind of shows you, uh, maybe if you're thinking about getting a VFT, they're really, really easy uh, to set up. Uh, there's a lot of great resources online. If you go to their website, they also give you, so they give you this little sheet. They don't give you like a full installation guide. Uh, they give you a little QR code so you can scan it and it takes you right to their PDF. Uh, but they give you this little tiny pamphlet with all the different jumpers, what they do. And uh, you know what, to hook something up like this yourself is really not that difficult just you know double check triple check all this stuff if you don't have a lot of experience with electrical uh, I've done quite a bit of electrical and like I say I know enough to be dangerous so I always double check what I'm doing but it works fantastic and uh, I actually <laughs> it's kind of gonna be a pain now because I have to move these things together uh, but I'm really excited to have this and then tomorrow I'm picking up some of the feathering adhesive So we'll kind of take a look at that and then once I have this all built out properly uh, I'll definitely do a, a video about how I made it uh, maybe give you guys some ideas and then I'll, I'll report back to you once I've used it for a while I'll Let you know what I think of the disc grinder uh, I'm really excited. One one gentleman I forgot to mention, and he was probably the very first person I saw with a disc grinder, was Mike at, at Ecom Knives, and I know he uses his extensively. He actually has his mounted uh, so that the disc is horizontal, and he uses it a lot for cleaning up his handle scales and really getting some beautiful finishes, so I'm really excited about this. I think it's a very versatile tool. I think it'll complement the 2x72 quite nicely, and uh, really excited to have that done. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Cheers.